Hello everybody, I'm Abby Esparza, if you don't know me, and if you do, a hello again. I wanted to do something quick, fun, and easy, and my uh, glitter effect fit that assignment. I've been wanting to redo my old tutorial on this for a while and just make it something more streamlined. It's super versatile, it can be used to add a subtle dewy skin look, a really great makeup effects, or uh, details like scales and other fantasy things. Shiny things in general, anything that needs a glitter shine texture, you know? So this whole effect is about layering different speckled brushes on top of one another. Don't worry, I will be providing those brushes for free, link down in the description, because most of them are just the default round brush with different settings and creating different densities, uh, ending with a texture filled glittery shine. Now let's start with grabbing that low density brush. Next, we'll create a new layer and set it to overlay, set the brush color to white. Uh, here's the trick with texture. Brighter areas call for a larger brush size, while darker areas require a smaller one. More light means more detail, while shadows mean less. The detail will also be softer in those shadows. If you have a pen tablet, things will be a bit easier, but it's really not necessary. Regardless, you'll use the eraser brush to taper and soften out those darker areas. We're trying to avoid any streakiness and lines, but there's no need to stress about it for this first layer. Uh, this layer really just serves as a guide for the more prominent details later on and creates almost a transitional base. Subtle texture under our main texture so there are no random bold spots. Feel free to switch between the brushes as necessary. A low density brushes work well for larger areas while the higher density brushes are better for smaller, narrow areas. Where you place the glitter also depends on the effect you want to achieve. Is the glitter on the skin, like uh, makeup might be, or part of the skin Edward Cullen style? Since I want her skin to appear like a kid's craft project gone horribly wrong, I'll add texture literally everywhere, including the dark areas, even though it's going to be pretty subtle there. In fact, when adding effects like this that are based in highlights, you really risk losing all the depth in your shadows and messing with your values, but you need those shadows to contrast against these shiny, bright textures, or you're going to end up with zero visual impact. It's going to look like a gummy pile of garbage. In fact, the more texture you want, the darker you'll want this underlying layer to be. You can try different layer modes, like Multiply works great, to create a darker, more intense texture and you can always come back later to enhance some areas or tone others down. Now, if you just want a super fine, dewier glitter effect, you'll want to spend more time on this step because it's your first step and it'll be kind of your only step. If I'm creating a cuter character effect, I really like to hit the nose and cheekbones of the subject with these brushes. It adds dimension to the face just like real life highlighter makeup does. I like the stuff you put on your cheeks. Once we have a good amount of that texture laid down, we're going to create a layer set to overlay and repeat the same steps but with a darker color. Opt for a darker color of whatever the surface you are painting on. If you go with black, you risk the image looking really muddy and blah. Even though when we think glitter, we think of highlights and like shine and light, adding a darker texture under this lighter texture will give more depth to the glitter so it appears less flat. It'll give a more authentic illusion of texture, like true texture. But we're going to move on to the exciting part of the glittery highlights. Start by creating a new layer. Now grab the low density brush and let's keep the size of these highlights relatively small uh, to medium size. For the color, I like to use different pale or pastel shades. If you choose white, which you can, you'll just end up with a very true silver looking glitter, which might be what you want, but whatever you just need your vibe to be. Now let's do exactly what we did before with the highlights on the overlay layer, but this time let's be more mindful about the density and sizes of our texture. The grain will be larger in those bright areas and smaller in the darker areas. There will also be fewer specks of light in the really darker areas uh, because nothing would be shining there to make the glitter sparkle. That doesn't mean the shadows need to be devoid of detail, it's just going to be softer and more subtle. The same thing goes for scales and other fantasy skin effects. Uh, we can call it bounce light. Just little beams of light that happen to sneak into those shadows. Hit any areas that look too bright with the eraser brush. 
and be extra careful to avoid streaky lines of texture, uh, but get in those nooks and crannies, no bald spots. You really don't need to overthink it, at the end of the day, we're just painting dots. Focus on those highlights. When it comes to mid and dark points, it's important to apply less of that texture while putting more emphasis on the highlights. This will help maintain a balanced contrast and bring out the features of the subject or object you're actually painting on. Remember not to overshadow the shape of the subject while working with highlights. Keep your values in mind. Shapes are formed through a delicate interplay of highlights and shadows, known as values. So if we accidentally replace those shadows with excessive highlights or bright, a high textured detail, the overall shape is going to suffer. And that's why we paint on multiple layers too, so we can revisit previous layers and adjust as we needed. Uh, creating a new layer whenever you transition to a noticeably larger texture can be helpful. That way you can easily switch back and forth between the layers, modifying what you don't like without kind of affecting what you do. Been there, done that, no fun. And once you're happy with everything, with all the glitter or whatever you're painting, then you can just merge all those layers together. And finally, we want to make sure we're on a new layer for the super big pieces of glitter because we're going to hit all of them with the eraser brush, a nice, fat, soft one. We want to sprinkle these little dots around, but just like before, these will be most prominent in the brighter parts of the image. Maybe just throw a few flecks in the shadows there. Then we're going to partially erase them using a big, soft, round brush. This will give the highlights a half-lit look, like they're at an angle and it'll keep them from looking flat and harsh. And of course, we can do all different kinds of little reflections. Any shine will do. Personally, I love a six point star shine. I'll include a brush in that free brush set. Simple light blooms also work like a charm. And we can also add some extra shine using an overlay soft light or color dodge layer. Color dodge is great for adding an almost iridescent color shift effect, um, almost holographic looking. I wouldn't use those layers to create any new texture, but they work great to really punch up and recolor what we already have laid down. And you can also use these brushes to create super fast stars, uh, which I'm a massive fan of, like a nice simple starry night sky, or to paint in some quick flying debris and other details like that. It's a simple little brush set and photo effect that packs a uh, pretty big punch. I have a few other resources I'm cooking up. Follow me on Instagram to keep updated on all of my shenanigans. I am just so interesting after all. That's going to be it for today though. Say hi in the comments because I am so very lonely or check out my last video where I talk about oil paint textures. Those are literally your only two options. I'd be the worst NPC character. Also share in the comments how much you hate the NPC trend on TikTok. <laughs>